If you're looking for an up-to-date guide to enhance your experience with Twilight Princess, this is most certainly the one you want to follow. Of course, the game was released on Wii U as well, but today, I'm going to focus on the GameCube version running on Dolphin. I could have gone with the Wii version as well, but it's essentially the same game with motion controls. Just a heads up before continuing, the texture pack I used to enhance Twilight Princess is not free. But I will direct you guys to a free texture pack that's a reasonable substitute, but obviously the paid one is better. So, with that out of the way, let's start with this easy guide. Let's download Dolphin first. If you're familiar with this step, just skip forward to another segment. But if you're still new to GameCube emulation, please pay close attention. Most of you will be on Windows, so just copy what I do. Once that's done, I recommend moving the downloaded archive to your desktop. It makes things a bit more manageable. From there, we can install Dolphin to the computer. We'll just open the archive and extract the folder into the C drive. You don't have to do it this way, but I'm just trying to keep things simple. After that, we can close the extraction tool and delete the Dolphin archive since we no longer need it. Before running Dolphin for the first time, we should set it into portable mode. Just create a text file called portable.txt. If you already have settings configured, be warned that this will set everything back to default and your save files will also be gone. So be careful before turning on portable mode. But if this is your first time running Dolphin, it's perfectly fine to use portable mode. By the way, you'll notice a user folder here which was created when I ran Dolphin for the first time. It's this user folder that's important for the installation of texture packs, and without implementing portable mode first, this would have been much harder to find on your PC. All right, so let's start configuring Dolphin for default settings. This will essentially be a baseline for all GameCube and Wii games running on the emulator. Later on, I will show you how to change settings specifically for Twilight Princess. I forgot to enable cheats here, as I should have, but I will do it a bit later in this video. Under the Graphics tab, there are a few things to change. Just follow my example. 1080p is a good general resolution for most games running on Dolphin. You could push it all the way up to 4K, but unless you're installing texture packs, it's not really necessary. Before moving on to controls, we should have a look at the Advanced tab. Texture packs won't work unless this setting is activated here. Prefetch works with about 90% of texture packs, but a few, like the HD mod for Resident Evil 4, won't work with this enabled, so always test the setting. Since we're going to run the GameCube version of Twilight Princess, we'll just configure the GameCube controls. I own a Xbox 360 pad, but if you use something else like a PS4 controller, the option should be available in the drop-down menu. Anyway, proceed to map the buttons when you're ready. And when that's done, go ahead and save the profile. Call it whatever you like and simply click the Save button. Under the Interface tab, there are only two things to change. The first is to allow the downloading of game covers to Dolphin, and the second is to change mouse cursor visibility to Never. The mouse cursor will just be a nuisance when you're playing games. With Paths, you can direct Dolphin to wherever your games are installed. I usually like to keep games inside Dolphin's main folder because it makes it easier to find, but the choice is yours. If you look here, you'll notice that I have a GameCube ROM of Twilight Princess. It's an ISO image file, and if I drag it inside the emulator's main folder, the game will suddenly become visible inside the view screen. It's in the list view, but if I change to grid view, you'll see that we have the game's proper box art. Now you understand why we enabled the downloading of game covers. In case you didn't know, the game is ready to be played. It will already look a lot better than the standard GameCube version. But if you're interested in even better graphics, maybe you should continue watching. Alright, if you're interested in going further, first make sure that your game is in the ISO format. It might be something else like RVZ. And if it is, Dolphin has a built-in tool to convert files to ISO, so use it if required. The tool will not delete the original file, but simply make a new one as an ISO. So direct the tool to wherever your game folder is and click the Save button. Now it's time to download the texture pack. 
The one I'm installing was made by Henrico Magnifico, but like I said earlier, there is a free alternative if you don't want to spend money. I'll give download links to both, so don't worry. So, once you've downloaded your texture pack of choice, simply extract it to your desktop. It all looks very complicated to the untrained eye, but we're not going to use most of the files and folders here. This texture pack includes a version of Dolphin that's way too old, so we'll just skip it and head over to this folder here. This is the actual texture pack, and it's what we really want. We're going to move this inside Dolphin, so go ahead and cut this folder. It will go to the textures folder inside Dolphin, so if you don't know where it is, just keep following my example. Before continuing, we need to make sure it's labeled correctly. The serial needs to match the one given to Twilight Princess inside Dolphin, so just follow my example if you're clueless. This is the correct serial for the USNTSC version of Twilight Princess. You need to take note and then replicate it here on the folder. Make sure the serials match. The only thing left is to configure Twilight Princess for its texture pack. You start by right-clicking on its profile and selecting Properties. Go to Game Config and then Graphics. First, change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. And then, under Enhancements, crank the resolution all the way to 4K. This is to take full advantage of the texture pack. The next setting to activate is Arbitrary MIP Map Detection. It's used to fix broken sun rays which are mostly visible through windows. After that, you need to head over to the Patches tab and enable the Hyrule Field Speed Hack. The last thing we need to cover are the Gecko Codes. The widescreen hack is already available here, and we should just activate it. But you can see that Dolphin wants me to enable cheats first. Without cheats, none of the hacks will work. There is another Gecko Code that we have to add manually, and this one is meant to mitigate the bleeding or ghosting effect of Bloom in the game's graphics. Bloom is quite strong, so this is an important fix. Once you found it, simply highlight the entire code and then copy it like so. And after that, go back to Dolphin and go back to its properties. From there, go to the Gecko codes again and create the custom code as shown here. Twilight Princess is finally ready to be played with upscaled graphics and enhanced textures. I hope you appreciated this guide because it was quite a chore, but anyway, if you found it useful, please remember to give a like. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.